The richest families in the world have a combined net worth estimated at about $1.2 trillion. What that number means is that if these families formed a country, they'll be wealthier than over a hundred countries. But we're not only here to talk about wealth, we're also talking about powerful, influential families that can change how the world spins if they want to. These are the most powerful families in the world. Before we get to our list, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell. That way, you'll be the first to see our next luxury video. Rothschild Family We can't prove all the theories that suggest that the Rothschilds control all the world's banks or that they wanted to make more money, so they started a world war in which they sold guns to both allies and Axis powers. However, we can prove that they are the richest family in the world whose wealth is over $400 billion. Mayor Amschel Rothschild started constructing the family's empire in the 18th century, which became even more powerful under Mayer's sons, Amschel Mayer, James Mayer, Solomon Mayer, Carl Mayer, and Nathan Mayer. They were pioneers in the banking industry, establishing multiple branches in Vienna, Paris, London, Naples, in addition to their hometown, Frankfurt. The Rothschilds started a small business concerned mainly with trading goods and foreign exchange, but they only kept growing their activities to include asset management, merchant banking, private banking, venture capital, pensions and investments, sovereign debt, and commodities, just to name a few. They have also invested heavily in infrastructure projects such as tunnels and railways, and most notably, the Suez Canal in Egypt, which is the only link between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Their banking empire grew exceptionally during the French Revolution, with Mayor Rothschild facilitating payments from Britain to hire mercenaries. And in the early 1800s, Mayor Rothschild sent his sons to live in five countries across Europe, which basically started the world's cross-border bank. The Rothschilds grew so big that they started lending money to countries to finance military operations. During the Napoleonic Wars, the bank financed subsidies that British government had sent to allies and lent funds to pay British troops, almost single-handedly financing that war. This act over several centuries gave the Rothschilds a great opportunity to rack up additional money in different fields. Before his death, Mayor Rothschild left clear instructions for his successors on how they should deal with his empire. Mayer wanted his fortune to remain within the family, which is the reason his will outlined a system of succession, where property and title could only go through the male line, excluding female descendants from any direct inheritance, which encouraged marriage within the family. Today, the Rothschilds are pretty much laying low with only a few descendants out in the public eye. These descendants are known to be the richest people in Europe and own Europe's biggest investment firms. However, more Multiple reputed journalists claim that the Rothschilds now function as a shadow organization that has stakes in almost every international bank. Windsor Family whether it's admiration for their established birthrights or numerous leadership qualities, the British royal family is without a doubt the most respected family in the world. They have everything, power, prestige, and loads of money. The wealth of the British royal family is quite substantial, and surprisingly, most of the money funding the British royalties doesn't come from the taxpayers. Members of the royal family are all wealthy on their own. With their combined inheritances, crown estates, and allowances, these royals don't need to spare any expenses while enjoying life. The Windsor family also has exorbitant amounts of paintings and assets. They own multiple castles, mansions, and estates that are all super expensive, and the most surprising part is that they don't even buy most of them. Their luxurious holdings include Kensington Palace, which is worth an estimated $630 million, and Buckingham Palace, which is worth a staggering $4.9 billion, making it one of the most expensive and popular buildings on the planet. In addition to the buildings, there's also a huge art collection that includes over 7,000 paintings, 40,000 watercolors, and approximately 150,000 old masterprints. Finally, there's the most important piece of them all, the Crown Jewels Collection, which is worth $4 billion. Now let's talk about the biggest name in the family, Queen Elizabeth II. Her Majesty is worth $400 million, which might not sound as much compared to others in this video. However, the Queen's influence doesn't only stem from her wealth, but also from the fact that she owns one-sixth of the world's landmass. She's the monarch of 16 countries known as the Commonwealth countries, which include Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. Now, now, one might think the queen is so rich because, well, she's the head of state. But apparently, even youngsters in the royal monarchy are worth huge amounts of money. Prince William and Kate Middleton's kids are among the wealthiest in the family. Prince George's net worth is estimated at around $3 billion. Prince Louis is estimated at $125 million. And Princess Charlotte is the richest in the entire family with a mind-blowing net worth of $5 billion. The reason behind the incredibly high value of Charlotte is her fashion influence. Coke family 
The combined net worth of the Koch family is estimated at $100 billion, which is good enough to make them the second richest family in the US. The Koch's legacy started when Fred Koch joined the Keith Winkler Engineering Company in 1925. The family's fortune kept growing under the control of Fred's children. Fred Jr., Charles, Bill, and late David Koch, who took over the father's empire and made it even more powerful and successful. Today, Koch Industries is currently the second largest privately owned company in America and the sixth largest in the whole world, with a yearly $115 billion in revenue. In addition to being extremely wealthy, the Kochs acquired multiple companies that effectively do everything. They bought the largest manufacturer of paper, Georgia Pacific, for $22.5 billion. They also purchased Molex, the electric electronic components manufacturer for $7.5 billion. The family also plays an extremely important role in politics, especially in far right-wing issues. Walton Family The Waltons are the richest, arguably most powerful family in the US. They are the successors to the great Sam Walton who founded Walmart. The Waltons make their fortune from being the largest shareholders in Walmart, owning more than 50% of its stocks. Sam and Bud Walton opened the first ever branch of Walmart in 1962, and today, the retail behemoth is mainly owned by Sam's children, Jim, Alice, and Rob. Also, three Waltons, which are Greg Penner, Rob, and Stuart, serve on the board of directors of Walmart. The family had six members on the 2015 Forbes 400 list, and their net worth was $136 billion. At the time, they had more money than 43% combined American families. Today, their wealth is estimated at $250 billion. Just to get an understanding of how big Walmart is, by revenue with $548 billion, it's the largest company in the world as listed by the Fortune Global 500 in 2020. Walmart also employs 2.2 million workers, making it the world's largest employer in the world. And as of January 2022, there are over 10,000 Walmart branches around the world, existing in 24 countries and under 48 different names. Despite the huge amount of money Walmart makes the Waltons, it's not their only success. In 1983, they founded Sam's Club, which sells bulk products at reduced rates for its membership-paying customers. Sam's Club has nearly 600 branches in the US and Puerto Rico. Even their charity foundation, the Walton Family Foundation, was a hit. In 2016, they announced that they're donating $1 billion to help build and renovate charter schools in the US, and since 1989, provided almost 22,000 thousand grants to a wide range of education-focused nonprofits in the education, environmentalism, and economic development sectors. Before we move on to the last powerful family on our list, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe and click the bell. That way, you'll be the first to see our next luxury video. Also, comment down below and let us know who your favorite family on this list is. Morgan Family the Morgan family is one of America's strongest powers since they control the J.P. Morgan Chase Co. Bank, which is by far the largest bank in the U.S. and the fifth largest in the world. The enormous bank has assets worth $3.7 trillion. The bank is so big that if it were a country, it would be the 15th wealthiest country in the world. Morgan's family success is mainly attributed to the mind-blowing work of John Pierpont Morgan, aka J.P. Morgan, who started building his empire back in the 19th century. He began his career in 1857 when he started working at his father's banking firm in London. He then moved back to the US, where he supplied 5,000 American soldiers with rifles that he bought for $3.50 and sold them for $22. Morgan's true start was in 1871, when a man called Anthony Drexel partnered with Morgan to form the Drexel Morgan & Co. firm, which in 1895 was renamed to J.P. Morgan & Co. after Drexel's death, a company that became the main financing source for the the US government. Morgan started taking troubled businesses and reorganizing them to become more profitable, a process that would become known as Morganization. He then shifted his focus to the steel industry and bought the Carnegie Steel Company for almost $480 million. He then merged it with a couple other steel companies he owned to form the US Steel Company, which was worth $1.4 billion. It was the only company to be worth more than a billion dollars, and it was only 1901. 
After his ventures in the steel industry, Morgan moved to the railroads, where he helped reorganize many railroads to make them more sustainable, a process that put Morgan in charge of over 60% of American railroads. J.P. Morgan was an American superpower to the extent that when the 1893 Depression hit, he formed a syndicate that resupplied the American treasury with $63 million worth of gold. And three years after, he started helping other companies that were crucial to the U.S. economy, like Edison General Electric and Thomas Houston Electric, to form General Electric, America's predominant electrical equipment manufacturing firm. Hey, click on the screen to see another luxury video.